work if you get a draw it early. Do you like to draw cards? I love to draw cards. Me too. Well, uh, we, we're going to see that over on Zack's side. On the opposite end, Caleb playing the Charizard Pidgeot deck. He likes to search out cards, which is kind of the same thing. But uh, we do see that inclusion of the Beeberol once more. That uh, big uh, thing iteration that we saw in EUIC from Torg Reklev. Caleb's kind of known for this now. Got second place at Charlotte, uh, copying uh, <laughs> Azul Garcia Griego, and uh, obviously was uh, uh, paying homage to that. And then we saw here now with a very similar list to Torg's, not exactly the same. Doesn't go uh, as hard on the supporter counts with the uh, the yell cheers and the turos. Yeah, there's a couple differences though, which are kind of cool. So we'll have to see if they come in clutch here. One zero one Pidgeot EX and that limiting on being the prizes for Caleb. Meanwhile, Zach, two Nest Ball, Asada, that Earthen Vessel, and the Flutter Main. So there is a limit on the damage you can do with the Roaring Moon with its Vengeance Fletching, and it means how many ancient cards are in your discard. Three of them in the prize cards going to lack a little. I mean, half the deck is ancient cards, and we see half the prize cards are as well. <laughs> so no complaints here. Looks like we're off for a great game here in round five, and it's going to be an entry matchup for sure. We talked, uh, obviously, towards list throughout uh, all of EUIC, and then getting to this game, it, it loves to uh, use that Turo and avoid issues. Maybe Caleb's able to avoid the same thing and keep these Pokemon preserved. Let's find out. Round five starting off. Zach is going to be going first for us here today. And this opening hand is always one of the scariest ones for a deck like this Ancient Box. And it seems like Zach does have some play here with a Pokestop. This is a scary hand for a commentator as well. There's so <laughs> many shiny things going on. Looks like there's a little play here, but to start Ooh. things off, uh, maybe some supporters for next turn. <laughs> yeah, uh, two Pokegear off that Pokestop. Discarding the other one. Not that big of a deal, but having access to your Professor Sada's vitalities throughout the game is the big deal for this deck. It is your main engine to get energy in play, as well as just try to dig through that deck. Another card that's very big that I don't think Zach has access to yet is that Radiant Greninja. Yeah, finding that Pokemon early can be so important. Not only is it one of those potentially ones that's difficult to search out for at times, which is why you see so many counts of the Nest Ball and the Ultra Ball, but when you do have that Pokemon, just getting those energies into the discard pile to accelerate with the Sada at times, and obviously just drawing through the deck is so vital for a deck like this. You gotta find that Pokemon soon so that you can uh, start to find the other great cards you have. And then you see there, as Zach's looking through the deck, there's that tech of Kabalion being able to deal extra damage to your opponent's dark Pokemon. That's justified law ability. Could be something that comes in handy against Caleb in this Charizard EX deck, but one thing that Caleb's playing, trying to counteract something like that, that uh, Hero's Cape Ace back. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just a back and forth over and over again, trying to find these slight advantages, potentially sneaking in some knockouts. Yeah, well, try to get through 100 extra hit points. <laughs> when we're already one of the beefiest Pokemon in the TCG. And Zach is not playing any copies of Lost Vacuum, so that's going to be a pretty clutch card if both players get the ideal setup that they're looking for this game. Yep, speaking of that, you see Zach just trying to get an understanding of what is going on in the prize cards here. Searching out those energies is easy, but you want the information. You want to know uh, which Pokemon potentially are in the prizes. And do you have all the resources you'll need to get these attack the attacks off on the second turn? Oh, so I misspoke. It looks like there was an Ultra Ball in that hand. Again, just all these gold cards. Uh, so that does mean if Zach chooses, he can have access to that Radiant Greninja this turn. Yeah, that's the one you're looking for. Concealed cards, obviously one of the best abilities we've seen in the TCG. It's so simple, but it's so important too. Just having those energies in the discard pile, it just synergizes so well with many strategies. Moonlight like Shuriken is such an incredible attack, just not in this deck. <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh my god. Yeah, you know, I think it's already <laughs> got enough resources. Let's calm down and just get some cards in the discard pile. Concealed cards here going to pitch that energy that Zach found off of the vessel and finds Asada for next turn. So it could be pretty good here. Get some early knockouts against this Charizard deck. And we see also the addition of Fluttermane into the hand, too. So just more ancient Pokemon to work with. More ancient cards for the discard pile at some point as well. Accelerating the attack of that Roaring Moon to potentially uh, start to two-shot <laughs> Who knows, maybe even one-shot some Charizards <laughs> by the end of the game. It's really hard to get to one-shot, though. 
You pretty much need your entire deck in your discard. Goodbye. <laughs> now Caleb's starting off pretty well here with a nest ball, and this is kind of where Charizard wants to be going second in a lot of these games, just so you can get that supporter down. If there's an Arvin, that's ideal, but I think I see an Iono at least. If there's ever a time to prize one zero one one pitch out, it is against this deck because <laughs> your opponent doesn't have opportunities to play cards like Boss's Orders. They're so uh, focused on using the Professor Sada's Vitality as their supporter every turn, potentially even using the Explorer's Guidance to try to draw through and burn through cards. Uh, and you also, you saw that the ace, uh, the ace spec of choice is going to be that Awakening Drum as opposed to the Prime Catcher. So you can't target down this Pokemon. Once you have the Beaverall, the Pidgeot established, it's likely they stick around for the majority of the game. Rotom V seems to be the grab off this Nest Ball here, but Caleb's still thinking about it a little. Does have access to an Ultra Ball. Going to be discarding that Charizard EX and what seems like Jirachi. Jirachi is going to be the card that's not really useful in this matchup. There's no Sableye or anything to try to stop that Lost Mine. So pretty easy discard here. But having to discard the Charizard, going to have to go fish it out later. No sneaky Flutter main damage, I guess you, we <laughs> yeah. could potentially be concerned about. But yeah, it's, uh, it's not something that we worry about too often here on Caleb's End. And Finding these basic Pokemon could be so vital. We also saw that Iono in the hand as well. So turn not anywhere close to over. And it's actually going to be a little bit rough for Zach with that Iono just because those two Pokegears and the Sada in the hand going right to the bottom of the deck. Sada's already in the prize cards. You ever spin in the wheel here for Caleb? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Oh, it's so tempting. Maybe next turn if you need those rare candies. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's no no reason to spin the wheel here, I suppose. Uh, if you're looking for maybe the Poffin or something to, to search out that Pidgey at times, you can, you can get desperate, but uh, not here. Do have access to that Cleffa, though. So we might see, yeah, attach, retreat to the Cleffa. And we're going to grasping draw at the end of this turn after this uh, Super Rod being played going to be able to draw until you have seven cards in your hand. Uh, a good replacement for the Mew that we lost with rotation? Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not bad. And certainly, you understand that in uh, the Charizard deck, you want to give up that opening prize card, maybe uh, accelerate the amount of damage you're able to do on the following turn, and ending the turn with seven cards is nice. It, it makes Rotom a little sad, though. It, yeah. it had one job, and, and this little Cleffa drew an extra card instead. <laughs> I do like the fact that you just draw them from the top of the deck instead of the old Cleffa's attacks where you shuffle your hand in, draw a brand new one. Can you tell me what that attack name was, Jeremy? Eek! <laughs> <laughs> Zach going to start off his turn with a Nest Ball, finding a second Roaring Moon. This is going to help not only with uh, future Professor Sada's vitalities, but also just shuffling the deck, getting those supporters back in the mix of things. Plenty of ancient cards to be used. Yes, you're throwing away the uh, the booster, uh, which could be some nice hit points, but ultimately you know you're going to knock out this Cleffa. And then at this point, Charizard knocks out everything in your deck anyway, so who cares? Just get these ancient cards into the discard pile, start to accelerate the fletching that can occur later on, and maybe uh, we'll start doing some real damage here in the next few turns. Concealed cards now for Zach, trying to find that powerful supporter. Ooh. Does have a boss's orders, yeah, though, man. so. I was talking smack, but. <laughs> does have the option of just attaching and boss's orders up one of the Charmander, take the knockout with Vengeance Fletching. If you're doing that, you're not really accelerating a lot of those energies, but we'll have to see. Oh. Oh. Ooh, that was almost scary uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, prize loss there. But. <laughs> the, the, the DPL flash <laughs> before our eyes, but thankfully it was just three cards. But, uh, Unfortunately, the Kabalion being shown right away here. Yep, surprise. And you know what? I've already thrown away three cards. Let's throw away four more. You see their superior energy retrieval in this ancient box list. Not a deck you usually think you would see that card, but just being able to discard two cards, get some energy back for your concealed cards or even your attack for the turn, very nice one of in the deck. Well, uh, Zach is doing us no favors with uh, <laughs> keeping track of the ancient cards in the discard pile. I'm sure we'll get a count at some point with the Roaring Moon attacking into some Pokemon. Maybe the damage will have to tell us, but 
It's uh, it's starting to stack up slowly but surely. I think it's more than 30. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to do a count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 140. That's my guess. We'll take it. That's not bad. That's going to turn on these Charizard EX, though, for Caleb here. And already having access to Rare Candy and that Charizard EX in hand. Yeah, vital pieces m missing. Of course, you have the Charizard. You have an attacker ready to knock out some Pokemon. But where is any of the support Pokemon? <laughs> After this, let's say the Charizard was attacked into and eventually knocks out, gets knocked out. If Caleb doesn't have the supporting hand, it's Charmander against the world here. So certainly got to use uh, the attacks you have right now to potentially grab some prize cards for some assistance. But Caleb does need to start benching a little bit here. Oh, we're spinning the stop. That worked out pretty well, you know? That, that was not bad. Yeah. A, a basic Pokemon is so important. Unfortunately, losing the Bidoof after already playing a Super Rod doesn't feel great. You're pretty much committed to Pidgey at this point. But Pidgey's good. Pidgey's all right, yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any world where you're going to use your last the super rod to bring rod. the Bidoof back in. <laughs> yep. That would, uh, that would limit your attack power. The rest of this hand, though, is just a little anemic. I think, yeah, Professor Turo's the Rotom to the hand, so it's not a liability. And take your knockout, hope to get the Pidgeot EX from the prize cards. That is 100% correct. And also just doesn't feel like a great turn <laughs> in the slightest. But sure enough... Charizard able to take a knockout to even out the price count here in round five. And Zach is on the back foot. Had to use uh, a supporter that didn't accelerate energies. It's it's Sada or nothing here. Does have access to that one Poke Gear in hand. Seven energies in the discard pile to, already? No, there's not seven. Four, five, six. Jeremy, that's seven. Oh, wow, that's seven. That is se seven of eight. <laughs> There is the superior energy retrieval in hand, thankfully. Yeah, it's, right. it's a card that in this uh, when it's included in the deck, you initially think, oh, you just want to just discard more stuff. But sometimes it's just great to have an opportunity to get some additional energies back into the hand, try to redraw once more with the Radiant Greninja, especially when you miss here and find Guidance instead of Sada. Yeah, this is the scary part of this ancient box deck where you need that Professor Sada's vitality just to get an attack off. And if you're not able to get it, it it's bad news. We might see a Superior Energy Retrieval here just to Concealed cards. I guess you also have access to Pokestop for another gear, but there's only two more gear left in the list. Yeah, start to see how the hand plays out at this point. Sure, you have Nest Ball and Ultra Ball. You could potentially thin out the deck a little more, then use the Pokestop. Give yourself opportunities to find the Poke Gear off of that card. Radiant Greninja could draw into it with an energy, so maybe just go for that first. Well, there's the Spear Energy Retrieval. Three Dark and a Fighting to the hand for Zack. Gonna see the Concealed cards here. Discarding Dark. Professor Sada's oh, Poke Gear. Rewarded and drum. with the Cure and the Drum. All That's right, a lot we of got cards. We got some we got some play here. Nest Ball can go grab a Coridon potentially. Yeah, but why didn't we do this earlier? <laughs> <laughs> Suppose maybe uh, information of Iono was something to think about at that point. So maybe that was the uh, the idea for Zach. Listen, we just had a feeling the Awakening Drum was on top of the deck. You could you could hear it. Ba -bum, yeah. Ba -bum, ba -bum. Three cards for the drum. No Professor Sada's Vitality yet again. All right. You have to think this Poke Gear is going to be able to hit it. Are you sweating now, Jeremy? I, I Always. That's, that's <laughs> fair. Uh, it's a condition. <laughs> one shot, seven, seven opportunities to capture okay. everything. There it is. Easy. Like, like it was always there. Now, Jeremy, <laughs> the beauty of this deck is... You have to do that like three more times to yeah, continually yeah, yeah. chain together attackers. You gotta live on the edge of your seat yes. this entire time you're playing the deck. <laughs> but we love it. Of course, this is such an, a vital card as you already see listed in the name, just uh, accelerating those energies from the discard pile. And then you have to have those energies from hand too so that you can continue to attack. Has to be those dark energies to attack with the Roaring Moon. And 
You're hoping to just be dealing 160, 170 at this point to start putting the Charizard in range, but maybe in the back of Zach's mind, he's thinking about Cape. I don't know, though. A after EYC, the popular A specs have been Maximum Belt and that Prime Catcher. This Hero's Cape, while we have seen it in Charizard in some online events and stuff, it's not the most popular. Well, Zach certainly wants to get more of these ancient cards into the discard pile. And already the has the, the information. Just... There is no more energy left in deck. And it's just all ancient cards. Yep. Focus stop, discard three ancient cards. That's... I didn't count. Well, Caleb's young mind is going to do it for us, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> the answer is three or four dice, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're up to four dice now. Oh, poke a stop. Trying to go for five. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Fifteen. Two twenty. It's four dice. All right. Yeah. Shout out to four dice. All right. Vengeance fletching. Two twenty. Yeah, yeah. Did I do math right? Hey, I, I, you know, regardless, it's going to be uh, oh, no. a little more. But yeah, that's, it's going to be enough to go through even what a cape would do. Oh, cape wow. obviously doesn't matter at this point now. Caleb wouldn't be using the resources there. Did Caleb draw Ultra Ball, or was that from the prize cards? But either way, you're getting a Pidgeot Yex this turn, and it feels good. Ooh. Makes you start to wonder about the Turo use. As uh, this Charizard is in danger, and Caleb needs to start to find some additional Pokemon. It's another rare candy, obviously, that needs to be used here. Quick search. Trying to help. Yeah, it is just the one Turo in the deck. Palpad is available, but having to Palpad, search for the Palpad and Turo in the same turn is always really hard. I think we're just going to see maybe another Charizard trying to set up this turn. Iono. Oh, was, is there enough? Oh, I was wondering if there were enough Pokemon to work in the Collapse Stadium here at this point. There was just the Manaphy, so there's not going to be a call from Caleb to remove the Charizard from the field, and even then, it would have been terrifying. But look at this hand yeah. off of Iono. Rare Candy Charizard as a follow-up. A great five cards. You even have access to Lost Vacuum to get rid of the Pokestop if you want. You can hold on to it for a little... That four seal stone can't use it since you don't have that Rotom V in play anymore, but not having the liability is always really good too. We'll have to see what Caleb does, but for you would think it was going to have to be a rare candy Charizard. <laughs> well, you, you never know what your opponent's <laughs> thinking on the other side. Maybe they hate Charizard. Maybe they're playing some Devolution, <laughs> and you don't want to lose all three rare candy Pokemon. That is true. <laughs> Lost Vacuum gets rid of the Pokestop, and we're just going to see a knockout here on Zach's active Roaring Moon. Yep, very safe choice here. Obviously, when you see Zach's deck, you probably assume there's going to be zero hand disruption. So Caleb gets to hold on to these resources, has another Charizard lined up, ready to go after this likely knockout from Zach, only so needing one Dark Energy. We're going to be doing 240 damage, it seems like, right now. Who's we? Well, Zach. You, pick, you picked a side? I, I, don't, I mean, I did pick <laughs> Roaring Moon <laughs> Fluttermane as my cards. Uh, Professor Sada is going to add another 10 damage to that, so 250 drawing three Pokestops, a great find here. If Zach has access to Countercatcher and 280 damage, you could Countercatcher that Pidgeot, but I think it's at the bottom of the deck. Jeremy, I'm, I'm so worried about this. Look, look at the board. Look at the hand. No energies. It has to be that super rod. That's such a big find here. You need to get these energies back into the deck so that eventually you can draw them and just have the energy attachment for the turn. After this Roaring Moon, it would, it would only be the Sada's Vitality getting your energy attachments down, and you just can't continue to chain together attackers that way. But so huge find there, there off was, of the Pokestar. There's a couple energy in the deck from the Iono. But. Well, we need them, <laughs> and quickly, as you see already three on the board and searching out potentially two here from the discard pile. Not even. Doesn't worry about the fighting energy. Wants to just deal some additional damage with the Cobalion. And uh, 
I, I can't fault the strategy here either. If you can run through the Charizards, maybe even work in a one-hit knockout, that's, that's dangerous. Yeah, I think there's two darks left in the deck now, along with that extra Roaring Moon. And that's pretty much going to be Zach's last kind of attacker for this game. You do see that Sada in hand, but this might be the turn where you just explore his guidance. But either way, you're going to be taking the knockout here. He's just saving no supporter for the turn. I love this part of the game where you realize you can't discard the energy capsule, so you just attach it to your Pokemon, hoping it gets knocked out. And two more ancient Pokemon arrive in the discard pile, <laughs> or ancient cards, excuse me. Caleb promotes that Pidgeot EX with its free retreat. And we already know that Rare Candy Charizard is in hand, going to be able to search for anything. Maybe now we see that Hero's Cape. This could be a situation where you just commit to this Charizard and try to get multiple attacks from it. The opponent is starting to dwindle on their resources and I'm not sure if this turn really feels like the Iono turn, but next turn certainly has to be a pretty good one. Double Arvin Luminion V in hand to go along with that Rare Candy Charizard. So Caleb definitely has a lot of options available to him. Does seem like just a Charizard EX here. So count I think we energies. might be getting two of them. Energy count, there are three energies, so that is two fully loaded Charizard EX ready to roll. Yeah, and the Arvin's going to be able to get the Rare Candy and the Hero's Cape here. It's going to be a pretty stellar turn from Caleb. Here's the bad news for Ancient Box. Hero's Cape. It's going to be a big Charizard. Yep. Knockout potential on this Pokemon. Went out the window. <laughs> Surely uh, getting that many ancient cards just is not realistic. <laughs> yeah, and the boss's orders being discarded from the Pokestop on the last turn means going to have to work a little bit harder to get that gust effect going. Oh, wow. here's Cape on the Pidgeot. Yeah, because I, I kind of like Pidgeot. that. Don't mind that, too. Yeah, if you think your opponent can't reach 330, then now all three Pokemon are protected. This is a turn where your opponent can't take a prize card, and then you still have the search effect lined up for next turn to maybe go for that hand disruption in the Iono. Put your opponent in a spot where it is near impossible to have second Roaring Moon ready to go. Speaking of the second Roaring Moon, that's going to be uh, the number one thing Zach's trying to do this turn, other than getting an attack off. <laughs> trying to set up an attacker so you can attack again next turn. Yep. It's the dance that we describe so often from this deck, just you try to continue to present threats, and it is very difficult when you see uh, the draws line up the way that they did, when you don't see the early Sadas and the energies presented on board in that way. It just means that you need to have upwards of three, four, five cards line up each turn to get your Pokemon ready to go. And Zach was debating here between Pokestop and this Nest Ball, but if you discard that Kabalion that you just put back in, it kind of seems like a waste. So. Being able to search that out, get that ability up and running, so you just have a chance to knock out this Charizard, potentially. Committing the Coridon, that means probably just going to Sada now. Yep. It's the second ancient Pokemon to accelerate energy to. There is a useless fighting energy in the hand that you may as well attach and potentially soften up a Pokemon with the Primordial Beatdown at some point. Two big resources back to the hand for Zack in that Palpad and Super Rod. Yeah, but I think Zack was really hoping for something like an Ultra Ball, just be able to discard the extra Ancient cards in his hand. There, there's more cards coming. Yeah, yeah. Are they good? <laughs> We're going to have to see. <laughs> we'll find the out. The deck is very thin right now. So, like one card remaining? Look at that. There's very wow. little left. But no counter way to discard. In. Is there even any Ultra Ball left? Oh, there's only two in the list, so kind of going very thin on the discard. Goodbye. Last card in the deck. <laughs> Dark energy. Going to see Super Rod, Palpad, maybe a combination of the both here, but 
this is the maximum output you can do right now. Still a lot of Ancient Cards left in the hand, though, and that's a lot of missed opportunity for damage. Yeah, you see the Coridon as a Pokemon with the Ancient uh, marking a couple in the hand as well. Palpad, if it is the play, you're returning an Ancient card back into the deck, unless it is that boss's orders. Well, there's that boss's orders and Asada's vitality. It's also scary because... I think Zach might need Tassada once more for that last knockout potentially. But you also have to draw three cards. Yeah, and you have to <laughs> you have to hold on to the super out at that point because you wanna you wanna draw and then replace the cards. Can't counter catch her right now. We'll get a confirmation on the Vengeance Fletching number here. 300, it seems like. Whew. It is an impressive feat from a Roaring Moon, and it is not going to be enough. With the Justified Law assisting, and then, of course, with what, 20 ancient cards in the discard pile, then. So close. It's still not going to be a knockout. Caleb playing the seven prize game flawlessly at this point, and Zach running out of threats. Caleb did draw boss's orders for the turn, but with Pidgeot EX, it's not really going to matter. He has access to pretty much anything he wants, even with that Luminion V, although probably wouldn't want to bench that down right now. Here's the, the question from Caleb. Is searching out Iono and going for a little bit of disruption important at this point? You know that your opponent's deck is just Sada's and boss's <laughs> orders. It will be in the hand next turn, one of those cards. Boss's orders if this Charizard is moved from the active. Would be unfortunate I, as far as damage goes, but... I think we're going to see a quick search for the Pal Pad and then Luminion the Turo back into the hand. You can certainly go for that, and you, you add the Luminion down as a card that you could target, but it's going to be the Kapalion being oh, okay. targeted at this point. Still having the Turo for potentially next turn, but getting the, the extra use of the boss's orders, taking out the Gavalion, which is the extra damage. Do you even damage. take it out? Oh. There's two cards left in deck. You, you, oh. you're, you're, you're putting your opponent in a situation where it is Super Rod or Bust at this, and yes, they can have Super Rod, but then they're manually attaching. And Caleb says, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, buddy. I'm a big bird. <laughs> yeah, this, these, uh, Ancient box lists tend to not really play a lot of maneuverability, but Penny. Uh, yeah, Penny is one of those cards that Galeb won EUIC and seniors with, or uh, Gabriel, sorry. Uh, and Penny is just a very good inclusion in this deck. Well, there's a surprising amount of ways to get additional cards back into the deck at this point. This is a, a situation where you can use your supporter for the turn, still have a card uh, left in the deck but there's still a pal pad. There's still a super rod. That means deck out situations are uh, not exactly lined up here. And Zach potentially gets to cash in on a little extra damage that he wasn't privy to earlier. Still no way to knock out that Pidgeot EX with the hero's cape, but just able to apply a lot of pressure. Says, you know, I'm not gonna knock you out. Primordial Beatdown does a little bit of damage, but can you just put this ancient card in my discard pile for me, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I have to take out this Roaring Moon if I want to keep playing Pokemon. Let's replace it with the Coridon. Why not? Zach sensing here. Might need another Roaring Moon. Maybe not, but okay. putting two back into Do the you deck. need three Roaring Moons? There's three prize cards left. Coridon's getting knocked out. I think you're okay with just the one additional. Listen, the, the Professor Turo scenario being back in the deck, got to gotta try to play around that a little bit. But one thing, Caleb also not taking the knockout last turn doesn't trigger that counter catcher in Zach's hand. The 60 damage from that primordial beatdown. Caleb is going to count out those ancient cards once more. Please don't find a way 
to actually knock out my Charizard here. You play 29 <laughs> Ancient cards, base 70 damage. Cobalion makes that base 100. So we're talking about 23 cards, 23 Ancient cards in the discard pile to knock out a Charizard. That's doable. Quick search here. Going to be taking a look through the deck, eyeing down that Professor Toro scenario. Use it to pick up that Charizard EX with 300 damage on it. Caleb's still thinking about just trying to play to the deck out game. You almost have to think there's, even with the 60 damage, there's no way to take a knockout on that Pidgeot EX with that hero's cape. Yeah, but what does what does Caleb accomplish with that, that Pidgeot at this point? Sure, it can continue to, to search out resources, but none of these cards are leading to, to knockouts right now. They're not leading to hand disruption. Uh, could potentially mess with Zach. None of those things really impact Zach. He has his attackers on board. He's just continuing to attack. And it looks like Charizard knockouts are going to line up at some point. Turo preventing this one. But there's what, one rare candy left? Yeah. Let's make it count. We don't even see the bench of the Charmander, which is a pretty good idea here, too. Yeah. Taking yeah. the knockout and Hoping this Charizard sticks around. Oh, boy. Well, for Caleb, it's not the end of the road if the Charizard is knocked out. It's awful if it happens, but there is still Radiant Charizard that could come into play, attack. Maybe you figure something out. Maybe Zach actually does run out of attackers at that point. But for Zach, we're counting. <laughs> There's a lot of cards that you need to think about in this spot. That is a pile right there. A discard pile of a lot of ancient cards just crumbling <laughs> away, but none of them from the hand. Yeah, there's just no way to get these extra ancient cards into the discard from the hand. And I mean, yeah, it, it's just the thin count of being able to discard with two Ultra Ball and the one superior energy retrieval. Are we going to Explorer's Guidance here? I mean, at, at this point, Zach's just thinking, I just need cards in my discard pile. I need those Ancient cards if I'm not already at 23. Pokestop does the same thing, and then you could Super Rod and just have energies available to draw so that you don't lose. But I think Zach also just needs an extra Roaring Moon on the bench, right? He's counted like six times, but I, every time that I jump in to, to, to count with him, I, I lose the spot. And the way three Explorer's Guidance works, cards. I believe you look at the top six, put two of them in your hand, discard the others. So you could still just put these two cards in hand, discard the one. But you have to take two. Yep. So if you wanted those cards in the discard pile, Pokestop would have been the play. If you're at 23 now, then clearly this was strong. Now you have that Roaring Moon and the Sada to maybe find that one final attack against a Radiant Charizard. Zach really thinking of everything here. Pal Pad. And do you even put back a... You have to put back the Penny. Yep. And then... <laughs> it might just be Penny. Oh, wow. You, 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 you take a knock on the spot. You have one prize remaining. Obviously, you have the Roaring Moon there on the bench that can probably get the job done against any other Pokemon. But if it is, it, it just depends if we're at 22 or 23 at this point. And well, putting the Professor Sada's Vitality back means... One less. I, yeah. I wish I knew how to count. Yeah. Uh, can we get Scarzig an extra button? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about the Lost Zone right now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just going to have that Vengeance Fletching not be Ooh. enough for the knockout here. Was it 20? It's going to be 270. Cobalion not played, so yeah, it's just 20. So Zach had the opportunity to take the knockout that turn. If he went all three full send, lose both of the Roaring Moon and the Sada, 
could just have left Penny as the pow pad card, but then would have no Pokemon to win the game with. Zach realizing that's the only way that you can continue to present threats is to not take the knockout here, but it leaves Caleb this window. And this should be somewhat of a checkmate scenario here for Caleb eyeing it down that Radiant Charizard, a great single prize attacker, just being able to find these last two knockouts. And with this Charizard EX in the active, that's one. That Radiant Charizard, that's number two. And we're just over 16 minutes left in this match. You have to think that this is going to tend or tend to go heavily towards Caleb this match. Yeah, you, you, you have two prize cards remaining. You take this knockout. Radiant Charizard cleans up whatever's left over. It's going to be very impressive from Zach if he can find a way out of this. Just holding on to those few resources left over. Countercatcher, Penny, boss's orders. But with two attackers in play, it's just, it's over. Knowing that the fire energies are in the discard pile is that inevitability of the excited heart radiant Charizard. Just that additional attachment there will take this Pokemon to taking a knockout. If Zach does not take a knockout and he understands this, it's like we're ready to move on to game two here with Zach, uh, with Caleb taking that opening lead. Yeah, just very good play from Caleb throughout that entire match. It was a long one. But that's what happens when you're playing an up against a deck like Ancient Box, all single prize card attackers. And Zach unable to actually get that big one hit knockout on a Charizard yet. He was working for it tirelessly, trying to find a way to take those knockouts. But I, a little bit of a detriment there when you saw the prize cards. I believe two Ancient cards were at the top, just was not able to draw into those. And it just meant that finding a way to get to 23 was going to be impossible without sacrificing the rest of your game plan. Yeah, it was a good start, N not good enough. There's no Professor Asada's vitality in the first turn of supporters for Zach had to use that Explorer's Guidance, take the knockout on the Cleffa. But Caleb, even while getting that Pidgey a little late, still had that Charizard EX take a knockout. Wasn't knocked out in return, so two prize cards for that Charizard, pulling its weight against these Roaring Moons. And Zach finally having Professor Sada's Vitality charges up the second Roaring Moon on the bench, taking the knockout with the active, but just wasn't really able to get a big density of cards in that discard for that Vengeance Fletching. And that Hero's Cape on the Pidgeot EX kind of sealed up this one turn for Caleb, making it so any Pokemon was out of range from getting knocked out. Yeah, three, three prize cards. Uh, the lowest hit point total, 330 and no counter catchers available on that turn. Zach really didn't have anywhere to go from that point. And checkmate was found from Caleb. That attachment onto the Radiant Charizard meant that either Pokemon would be taking the win next turn. Zach understands this. He says, you know what, I got 15 minutes. Maybe, uh, maybe we can make this work in game two and try to squeak out uh, one of those match points. Yeah, uh, gonna have to be playing pretty fast if he wants to try to do that here. But if a deck can do, oh. All right, we don't saw, love that. Yeah, we saw a few cards flip over. And they're definitely under the prize cards. Let's see, see the prize happens. cards there for Caleb. With one of those Charizards, Rare Candy, which we've talked about as an important card, and that one of Turo. Jeremy. Both of them are at the bottom, though. We're going to play that game? Yeah. I mean, it is Charizard. It's going to take prize cards, let's be <laughs> real. All right, maybe uh, maybe that is a good game to play. Hey, at least you know where the Turo is, right? That's true. We know. You'll find out soon enough. We'll see if anything needs to be done about that card being flipped over after going for the prize cards. Didn't look like it was going to be one of the prizes, but of course, any time that additional information comes out when it's not supposed to, probably a good time to call a judge. Good thing we have a couple standing by. It is going to be rough, though. It's taking up some time here just for the ruling. And then if you're going to beat down two prize cards in this match, you're going to have to, well, I mean, you're going to have to hope anyway. Oh. It's going to be a quick match. <laughs> Caleb's just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I might be in finals again, guys. This is going well. It's, uh, 
I mean, this is it's just part of the game. These are, these are things that happen. You're, you're battling great opponents, your nerves. You know, sometimes the, the cards stick together. Sometimes accidents happen like this. And you can't blame Zach. It's just something that's uh, you, you got to persevere through, and hopefully, he gets a good opportunity here in game two. Yeah, and in actuality, too, it's all all about that game one in this matchup. Fair. Just being able to try to win any game after like a 40 minute game is going to be tough. Yeah, I mean, imagine the, if it was the other way around. Caleb sitting here with 12 minutes to go and realizes he has to genuinely take six knockouts. Yeah. Taking six knockouts in Pokemon takes longer than 12 minutes most of the time. And uh, especially when you see all the actions that both these players have in their turns, it would be a nightmare situation. But for Zach on the other end, he does get to accelerate. He does get to burn through a ton of cards. There is a world where you just get to that magical 23 and just just burn through these Charizards. It's a big ass though. And yeah, you, you really have to wonder if it, how consistent you can be able to do it. Oh yeah, I mean, it, it, it's one of those things when you're playing solitaire and you're, you're trying to figure out if your deck is truly capable of this, you go for it all the time, but does it actually happen in tournament? Not, not for me, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm here. Is that why you, so looking at the matchup for these ancient Pokemon, Roar, Roaring Moon, stuff like that. Do you like the, the Duns and Dragons over the Ancient Box for this matchup in particular? Right. This is one of those where I, I really value the, the impact that uh, Roaring Moon EX has. Just being able to cleanly take those big knockouts, not have to worry about 330, 430, whatever it is as far as hit points. It just makes uh, a lot of the math easier. Sure, you accelerate the clock for your opponent. They're taking two prize cards whenever they knock out that Pokemon, but you get the best of both worlds with that deck. You get the early knockouts with the, the baby Roaring Moon, and then, of course, you're just removing Pokemon just like Giratina does on the other side. It's, I, I think it's a really strong choice for today. Yep, we're uh, waiting on the official ruling here for being able to flip a card over for your prizes, but... Naughty Zach, don't do it again. <laughs> He's gonna have to write a handwritten letter to all of his fans apologizing for flipping over that meaningless 10th card or whatever it was. <laughs> Unfortunate to see with the way this match has been played out so far, but again, I don't even know if this game is really gonna be finished too much. We'll have a little bit extra time here. I In need you to be a little things. more optimistic, Jeremy, okay? Listen, it's early. I can no. be pessimistic early. <laughs> no! <laughs> you need to be a, a, a chipper young man the entire t tournament, yeah, chip, okay? Chip's on the other team. Uh, well, maybe yeah. I'm going to ask for a trade. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what, what, what do I have to offer to Pablo? <laughs> I'm sorry. You know what? You can, you, can, you can redeem yourself by getting excited about game two here. <laughs> All right. But you can wait until after the judge call, because <laughs> rightfully so, this is uh, this is one of those difficult moments that we have in the game. It's just something that happens with human error and playing in a big tournament. Obviously, the judges are trying to make sure that we find that appropriate ruling and we get this handled as quickly as possible and as obviously as correct as we can. So it looks like it is just a warning. We're going to continue okay. as usual. Let's Jeremy. Go. I'm excited. Be optimistic. Let's go. Game two. Let's go. You know what? I think we're going to get a time extension, too. Oh, we are. Yep. Yeah. Free Pokemon coming your way. Round five. Is it free if we had to use the five minutes? Free po Pokemon. <laughs> free Pokemon. Oh. <laughs> Kabalion right. in the You prizes. know what? It, you, then you're going to prize the Kabalion. There's no ancient cards, though. That's I guess. Surprising. But it's, it's the same thing as prizing three ancient Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a really bad one to prize. It is super odd and the pal pad to go along with it, but... Zach is going to start things off. Has Fish. the Awakening Drum in hand. Fish! Oh. Jeremy. Okay. We got game. And we did get more time, too. Back up to 1230 for this game three. Awakening Drum going to draw three cards for Zach here. Doesn't have a Ooh. dark energy. That was a fighting. risk. I understand not wanting to play down the flutter. That one extra card might that come just, in handy. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you see that Pokemon, you say 10 damage. 10 damage would be great. But man, one card. One card would be really good. Yeah, especially if you're going to be attacking with this Coridon next turn. You're going to have to bench it anyway. Yeah, just go for it. Play those Pokemon down. There are situations where maybe you can just 
feed Caleb a couple extra Pokemon while you're buying time and trying to reach 330. I don't dislike playing that card down, just seeing some additional draw when your hand is not this strong. Caleb does have an Ultra Ball to start things off for this game, too, though. Discards Defiance Band and the Counter Catcher. Two cards you're not really going to need for a quick game, so. That's such a flex. Yeah. Just throwing away Counter Catcher. <laughs> lose. I'm not going <laughs> to lose. I'm going to be taking prize cards every turn. Of course, very important to search out the lines in this deck. You have that 1 1 Beaveral, 2 0 2 Pidgeot, and plenty of Charizard pieces. You want to know where all those are? There's just a lot of one ofs in the deck, to be honest. It's a lot to keep track of. No, I just want some consistency. I want to be able to play out whatever my deck strategy is here with the remaining 11 minutes that we have. You know you're going down in prize cards early. That Luminion is not long for this world. And at that point, Caleb will need to have at least some way of drawing with the B-Roll or some search with the Pidgeot in order to make this Charizard happen consistently. Yeah, if Caleb's forced to bench down that Rotom V in hand and use Instant Charge for the turn, it's another two prize cards. Ooh. All things to think about here for Caleb as he tries to piece together what's the best card in this spot. Cleffa, perchance? Maybe. We've seen this pop up a few times. The retreat cost of the Luminion is not too difficult to throw away one of those fires, earn yourself seven cards in your hand, but only play six fires. And having them doesn't always happen. Does find a Charmander off his Ultra Ball here. I did see an Iono in Caleb's hand. So it could be the supporter of choice, which would actually be pretty good for Zach. The, the hand wasn't too good. I think uh, a, yeah. a Poke Gear is the only saving grace. Yeah, fun, uh, funny enough, like for Caleb, he's just saying, ooh, this man, he just drummed for a three. Yeah. That hand's probably gas if he doesn't care about drawing extra cards. And sure enough, uh, this is exactly what Zach needed. Al played. <laughs> Sada and Earth and Vessel oh in hand. Oh, my goodness. Rare candy Charizard immediately drawn for Caleb. And a Buddy Poffin, too. So Ooh. being able to get another Charmander in play is going to be the number one thing here, but also being able to find something like that Bidoof or Pidgey. We've seen some players go for, I mean, obviously Caleb last, last game went for the Cleffa in this spot and did not have the Pidgey or the Bidoof on the, at the end of turn one. It led to being a, a little choppy, but then turn three was able to establish the Pidgeot, which stayed around, and Caleb might not think that that's a, a luxury this time with the, the Luminion in play. Got to have that Pokemon ready to go. Besides just that, Pidgey and Charmander found off that Buddy Buddy Poffin. Rare Candy, Charizard EX in hand, Ultra Ball in hand, and you're going to instant charge for three cards here? That's a good turn. That's a win. Not on the score sheet, but <laughs> in our hearts. And it does put Zach in a weird spot. Knocking out this Luminion means you're going to have to fill your bench with ancient Pokemon. No Radiant Greninja at that point. All of the ancient cards you would like to knock out a Charizard would be in play, not in your discard pile. Is that something that you're willing to risk at this point, or do you just need those prizes? I think you might just need those prizes, especially with the time, the way it is under eight minutes now to go in this match. Now, Zach's hand is pretty good. Earthen Vessel discards a fighting. Then there's another Earthen Vessel to discard the dark and get full use out of the Professor Sada's vitality. Yeah, this is very clean. I think there's also another Roaring Moon in the hand. So that's four ancient Pokemon. It's going to need the full bench, like you were saying to be able to take that knockout. Basically thinning all of the basic energies from the deck. There's maybe one or two still remaining in there at this point, but just leads to cleaner draws off of the Sada's Vitality as well. Here is that Professor Sada's. And there's basically no way to take a knockout with the Roaring Moon this turn, but Zach, did All right. he find the... It's there. Yeah, Nest Ball and the Coridon with that Roaring Moon will be able to get the knockout on this Luminion. This is what Zach needs to try to 
be able to make this a game. Yep, and uh, is doing this without any of the uh, the other Pokemon too. No, no Flutter main involved. So all of the Roaring Moon. Let's go. Locked in. 180 damage from the Primordial Beatdown is a knockout. This fish does not know what's coming. And you have that Ancient Booster Energy Capsule on the Coridon. It's just another way to get those Ancient Cards in the discard. Yeah, at this point, just get these cards played down. Ancient Cards can go into the discard pile. You have zero in your prize cards. The Cabalion potentially as a prize in that mid to late game situation to finally close out on a Charizard. There's spots where Zach could start to come back and maybe take game two here, but as a reminder, <laughs> this hand's gas. Caleb's going in. There's less than six minutes remaining. Th this this hand, is Charizard. This hand is at least three minutes. At least. Yeah. There is can rare candy double Charizard there, but you are, you're you going for Pidgeot instead. So <laughs> there's potentially triple <laughs> Pokemon. No, no, we're going to yeah, discard that Charizard. Double's fine. Yeah, we're, double's not, fine. we're not greedy. We're maybe going for the, the Bidoof at the end of the turn since Caleb drew into that B-barrel. A classy decision here from Caleb. It's not overly flex on your opponent. At this point, I'm starting to consider Buddy Poffin into Collapse Stadium stuff. Oh, yeah. Just remove that Rotom V from play. Easy prize cards cannot be on this board. And if Zach does happen to find that one of boss's orders, oh, that is uh, that is tricky. Well, here we're going to see the quick search. Can go for something like an Arvin. That Arvin can get you that Buddy Poffin and collapse if you want through four Seal Stone, but maybe eyeing down Iono instead. Come on. Do the crazy play where you <laughs> do a bunch of stuff with a Rotom and then reward him by sending him to the discard pile. Never to play Pokemon again. It's honestly one of my favorite plays. It's so great. It's <laughs> little oh, buddy he, just, little buddy just wanted to play down. Pokemon, and he's going home. All right, this is a four-minute turn, Kyle. This, with yes. this play, Arvin is going to be the card searched out. We're Every, already getting everything's everything established else. from this turn. You get the Bidoof. if you have the additional Charmander. Rotom goes home. Zach's thinking, man, <laughs> <laughs> I was almost going to get those prize cards if it wasn't for that meddling Rotom. Buddy Poffin and Forest Sealstone found off the Arvin. Forest Sealstone gets attached to the Rotom V. No rush, though. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, this is, this is the beauty of winning game one. You, you get to, to play this turn out short and sweet. It's oh, yeah, and by the way, we also get a Charizard still. Sign and me attack. Up. Do you like knockouts, Jeremy? I do. <laughs> You're going to love this turn. Two energy on the Charizard EX, one on that Charmander. But we're not done yet, folks. For Seal Stone Star Alchemy. With Keep this your eye on v. this guy. He's not hanging out much longer. <laughs> <laughs> Spaghetti oh, everywhere. Oh, he tried to hide him under the deck. That's impressive. Yeah. Flip over the collapse stadium. No need to put it in your hand. <laughs> Just, this kid is what, 16 years old, 17 years old, whatever it may be, and it's, these are these are big boy lines. He's finding some great plays to to just show off just what he's capable of. It's one of the the names we always see 4-0, 5-0 starting an event. It's Caleb's needs to get talked about more. He he really does. Uh, just. A huge turn from Caleb really seals up this entire thing. Under two minutes, 30 seconds left in this match. And Zach has no real route to victory anymore. That Rotom V was very much his only hope. Well, it's not going to stop Zach from giving it a go. Radiant Greninja played down with that bench slot opening up. And I'm sure you get to accelerate and maybe see a few more cards. But we're talking about consistently two-piecing these Charizards from this point forward. Caleb did find a prize card at the bottom. 
If it was the Turo, well, we're talking danger for Zach. Another turn completely erased, if that is the case. Explorer's Guidance here, top six, finds a Sada. Counter catcher that you can't use. But you do get a discard three ancient cards. Still it's a big hill to climb. Energy on the bench for Roaring Moon. Caleb doing his due diligence, trying to eye up how many. Ancient it was the cards. Radiant Zard off the prizes for Caleb. Okay. Looks like 10 ancient cards. So the two hit is available. Chip damage locked in. Nine cards, sure, whatever. Big thing only took a minute for Zach's turn. That is going to be his last turn before time, though, because this turn is going to be another little while. You got Ultra Ball and that barrel in hand. Ultra Ball can go ahead and find you a Charmeleon if you want. Yeah, I don't mind this. Oh, well, as long as the, the barrel's played, just playing down as many cards as you can in this spot, trying to draw into the cape. And if you find the cape, Charizard likely sticks around, even if you retreat and attack with a different Charizard this turn. Put your, your opponent in a spot where not only do they need to add, what, eight cards into eight, nine, ten, whatever it may be, ancient cards into the discard pile, but also need a boss's orders or a counter catcher to get the job done. Yeah, what do you mean trying to draw into the cape? Don't you just search for it? Well, if you if you just draw <laughs> it, then you can use Pidgeot for cool stuff. I Could mean, you imagine doing this turn in combination with Iono? That is true. Why, why not Come just draw on. the Iono? Well, fine, Jeremy. You can have the Iono <laughs> on the fifth card. Dang. Oh. <laughs> I was really hoping we nailed that. <laughs> Pre-recorded. Right. Having the Charmeleon on the bench with those two energies ready to go. Charizard has the attack already, and with the time we ran out, it's going to be turn zero for Caleb's side of things. That means Zach's going to have two turns to try to take four prize cards. So that's got to be pretty rough here, especially with this quick search for that potential cape, maybe Iono. Arvin. Yep. Without drawing to a piece of the Iono or the cape, Arvin then can just be the supporter of choice to get an additional resource along with the cape. Cape super odd, maybe. You throw the cape onto the Charizard and then maybe retreat and run away and just try to make sure that a single prize is the only thing available for Zach this turn and it leads to a checkmate on the next. Or send up a giant bird. <laughs> A big bird, as you will. It works. Yeah. Lost vacuum, that ancient booster energy capsule. That takes away at least one extra damage from Zach's side of the board after a potential knockout. But we're going to see that retreat. Bring up the Charmeleon. <laughs> sure. Why not? Yeah, pass. Rawr. Not even doing the 50. <laughs> Zach has counter catcher in hand, not able to use it. We didn't even here attack. <laughs> Pokey gear into the one boss's orders in the deck. And then your reward, either a single prizer <laughs> or a, a, a mega bird <laughs> that, that surely will not be knocked out. It's a pretty great spot from Caleb. Just the power of Heroes Cape in a list like this especially in a matchup like this where your opponent's very much capped on the amount of damage they can do. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's such a risk to play a card like this. Uh, one loss vacuum removes it from play. You lose all of the play from it. It's the debate that a lot of players would have back in the old A-Specs era with uh, Rock Guard and other tools that we saw played where you lose any of its effect if you don't get to initiate uh, the, the use of it. And... This is a card that definitely plays defense, but it works so well when your opponent is not equipped. Shout out to Life Do. Ooh. Love a Life Do. Professor Sada's Vitality going to charge up these Roaring Moon here. And while this game kind of seems like it's going in Zach's favor, just time is not available for this game to actually finish. Yep. If we had a, 
112 minute rounds. <laughs> Zach would be getting ready for game three potentially in a spot like this, but it's not the case. Yes, Tremillion falls, but how do you take three prize cards next turn? Iron Hands? Oh, man. We <laughs> forgot about it. We went through the whole deck in game <laughs> one, and we forgot to mention. No, there's a, it's not going to be an Iron Hands and a Lightning Energy out of nowhere, guys. Caleb just going through the motions here. Doesn't have access to that Turo to really seal things up, but with only one turn left for Zach, it is just inevitable here. Just call for family. Oh, yeah. Oh. I mean, if you don't attack with the Charmeleon last turn, I don't think you're attacking with anything this turn. <laughs> What's the point of even playing the turn out right here? If, if, exactly. if time is truly called, we're on, what, turn one or two? It's, Zach has one final turn left. I think Caleb wants to show, yeah, I still had all this stuff. Boss's orders the Roaring Moon with no energy. <laughs> Zach found the Ultra Balls that were needed last game to get those ancient cards in the discard. Poke gear here. All right. What, what's more disrespectful, the, the, the boss Charizard, uh, Charmander <laughs> or the last game Dialga V-Star for no reason? <laughs> <laughs> Either way, we have our winner here in round five, Caleb Rogerson getting the job done with that Charizard deck once more. He's, uh, he's definitely shown that uh, he knows how to pilot it regardless of what cards are being used. And so knows how to hit copy-paste. It's, yeah. an, it's an interesting list. And yeah. You know, he, he did. He, oh, de he deleted. Tweets, yeah. He yeah. deleted like two whole cards. Good for him. They uh they they, they worked out very well. Seeing the, very uh, well. The hero's cape in there was uh, a great addition and really uh threw Zach uh, for a, a, a really difficult time there. Now Zach still starting out strong, four one to start things off in Orlando here this weekend. Still needs to win a few more to make it into day two, but you have to think the. The way the meta has shaped up, as long as you're not hitting Charizard every round, it's going to be pretty good for this ancient box deck. Yeah, it's uh, it's the matchup you worry about. Yes, it is 20 something percent of the meta. So you did it to yourself, Zach. <laughs> it happens sometimes. You're still four and one, have a great opportunity. But this is how we've seen the matchup play out so often. Caleb, early aggressive start, just taking knockouts left and right. Sure, the chip damage did stick around on this opening Charizard. It is going to fall to this Roaring Moon. But after this, how do you take prize cards against this deck? 330 hit points all over the place. Throw a cape on your bird, and you're going to stick around for a long time. Yeah, that hero's cape put in a ton of work, both of those games. And it just goes to show that Prime Catcher isn't the only ace spec that people are playing. It's just the weekend. best A spec. Just the best one, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's all real matchup dependent, but Prime Catcher has just every matchup that it's good in, right? Yep. But it's... here, Heroes Cape put in a ton of work and then having that checkmate scenario of that Radiant Charizard down with the energy ready to go just meant there was nothing Zach could do. And the fact that that game one took 35, 40 minutes is just hard to deal with when yep. you're a single prize deck. Oh, we're going to skip it, but it was the cutie play of the day so far. The collapsed stadium <laughs> onto the Rotom V was unbelievable. A great spot from Caleb in order to clear the board and avoid a situation that could have been very dire. Instead, Zach with the three prize cards remaining as we got into the last turns of time. There's no way to come back out of this one, and we see the hands shake. The extension there, Caleb going to move on to 5-0, and a place that he's found himself in a quite a few times. It seems very excited about it. Yeah, uh, we'll most likely be seeing him again throughout this weekend. And just the fact that he's doing, doing it with one of the best decks in the format right now in Charizard. But the thing is, it's still it's still new. Like, t it hasn't been solved just yet. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's in a spot where we all understand how powerful this card is. We knew that 